Rocco, it's good to be back and welcome everybody. I'm Kaimi Loa Crispin. We're going to have an interesting talk today about this little guy, what people call the Ikaika, the gourd helmet. Must be hanging in 10,000 back, back rear view mirrors. And that's supposed to be a Hawaiian warrior's helmet, only it's not. So some will disagree with me, but I'm going to tell you about what this really is, and maybe you'll change your thoughts. So this one is made, you know, with a with a fall right here, and the original so-called helmets had tapa hanging out here, the bark cloth. Then they had some kind of a plant sticking out loosely up here, and this odd hole here that was kind of a figure of eight. It was it was more open right here. It was kind of a figure of eight opening. And this was worn on the heads of some paddlers. When was that? Well, Captain Cook first got to Hawaii in January of 1778 on Kauai. And that was the time of Makahiki. That's the period during the year when war ceases and the weapons are all put away. It's miraculous. There isn't any other culture in the world that had something like that. So Makahiki was the time of Lono, the god Lono, out of the four major Hawaiian gods. Lono was the god of peace. And he was the god of exercise and fitness and fertility, rain clouds, rain, um, sports. And miraculously, they just didn't have any war. War had to stop when the Makahiki period began. And it could start up again when the Makahiki period ended, which was roughly four months every year. So the people had a time of peace, amazingly during the Makahiki period every year. So at one point when Captain Cook went up to the North Coast and came back to Hawaii, this time he came to the Big Island, sailed around the Big Island to the south and came up to Kealakekua Bay on the lee side of the Big Island, a great place, a great sheltered cove. And when they were there, there were just masses of people living there. There were huge numbers of people that came out of the bay to see them swimming in canoes and so on, thousands. And at one point, a canoe, a double canoe, not a real big one, came out and circled their ship and went back. They didn't interact with the people on the ship. They just went out and went back. And on that canoe, the paddlers all had on a gourd helmet similar to this. So their face was completely obscured. They would just have to look through this sort of figure of a mouth type thing on the gourd. And some of them had tapa across the eyes and definitely had some tapa hanging down here. And they had one priest on the platform in the middle of the canoe. So there were probably 10 paddlers and one priest. And the priest was holding what appears to be a feather image. That's a war image, like Kuka Irimoku, Kamehameha's war image, feathered image. But it wasn't holding it up like they did in wartime. They'd hold it up and just scream. The priest would be screaming and screaming at the enemies with this powerful war god trying to frighten the other side. But this time it was completely down. It was just in the arms of the priest, kind of like holding a baby, which is totally opposite of what you'd be doing with it in wartime. And there may have been a black pig on the platform behind that priest. So what was that all about? It was never seen again. Just that one time was the only time they ever saw people in those helmets. And later on, Captain Cook's artist, John Weber, who's famous for being very realistic in his drawings. So he drew one of those paddlers like that. And you can see it's made of a large gourd. It'll fit over somebody's head, a figure of eight cut out. And then this odd sort of grass-like stuff out of the top of it. So what's that all about? We'll talk about that. And he also drew the canoe like that, the double hole canoe in the bay with the paddlers all masked, the priest masked also. So he went away, nobody ever saw him again, they never reported again in Hawaii's historical things. So who were they? It was Makahiki time again when he came back, middle of January when he came back, just like when he hit Kauai the year before. So the Hawaiians didn't have their weapons out, they weren't practicing war at that time, they welcomed the people. 
And so those were priests of Lono. I put good money on those were priests of Lono. And why do I say that? A couple of things. Because there at Kealakua Bay was a heiau, a famous heiau called Hikiau. And Hikiau was a Luakini Maoli. A Luakini is a sacrificial heiau where they did human sacrifices and where the Ku priests were in control of such a heiau. But a Luakini Maoli heiau meant that there were also Lono priests there. And in the Makapiki period, they were in control of the heiau and the ceremonies there. So actually two sets of priesthoods, the Ku priesthood and the Lono priesthood, on such a heiau. That was the highest kind of heiau. So I know that that was a Luakini Maoli heiau, both from some historic evidence and also from somebody that I know who was a descendant of one of the Lono priests on that heiau. So that would explain why the Lono priests came out and why they were wearing Lord helmets. Why were they wearing what we call helmets, really a headgear, in the time of Lono? Because the gourd is a kinolau, a body form of the god Lono. So all the different gods had different body forms, sometimes plants, sometimes fish, sometimes birds, things within the environment. And in, because Lono was a god of fertility and fecundity, the gourd was likened to that. Of course, a, a gourd plant would grow all over the place and have 20, 30, 40, 50 gourds on it, just like a multiplication of the population or children within a big family. And so the symbolism of the gourd made the gourd plant the kino, one of the kinolaus, one of the body forms of the god Lono. So when the priests had that on their head, they were wearing Lono. They were like becoming Lono because they were wearing Lono over their head. And the Lono image that went around the island during the period of Makahiki had a figure of eight mouths. The Lono images are known for having that figure of eight mouth, and that's exactly the kind of shape that's carved into the, the gourds that people call helmets today. So why do we call them helmets? Why do they call them ikaika, which means real strong? Why do we see the t-shirts with a great big muscular Hawaiian? He's got a gourd helmet on, he's got a pit bull with a chain, of course, and maybe a sword on his belt to ham it up all the more. And that's because to us, when we see something on somebody's head that has eye holes and has a crest, what looks like a crest on it, immediately springs to mind Greek helmets, Roman helmets, things of the past that were warrior's helmets. But a gourd is not a warrior's helmet, especially not in hand-to-hand -hand fighting like the Hawaiians did. If you were wearing that, you couldn't see anybody till they got clear up here in front of you. Anybody that was skilled could grab you by that gourd helmet twist your neck so hard they break your neck, they'd certainly throw you down and kill you immediately. And the sling stones that went flying by expert slingers during those battles would have gone right through one of those gourd helmets, hit somebody in the temple and kill them. So for that reason too, they are not warrior's helmets. I'm not the only one that says that by any means. And Papa Henry Alwai, who was my wife and I's teacher in Laulapau, Hawaiian herbal medicine, was very, very knowledgeable, and he was very adamant about the fact that those were not, not, not warrior's helmets. So it just got to be modern parlance that that's what they surely must be, and we've got those Ikaika things, and people talking about those and selling them all over the place. You go find one on the internet easily, but that is not a warrior's helmet. That is the god Lono. So we'll stop with that for today on that lesson, and soon we'll pick up on something else. Mahalo.